We are a group of students from Chesup and for our research project we decided to work with glaciers. We thought it would be interesting to investigate how fast the ice is melting. So therefore our question to pursue had to be what is the main cause for accelerating ice melting? So we decided to head out to point 660 which is located on the edge of the Greenlandic ice sheet. When we got out there we decided to set up our equipment in five different locations. In our first location, we decided to do a rock experiment to see how large sediments will affect ice melting. After that, we experimented with south and north facing snow drifts. To see if there is a difference in ice melting, we also looked at the color of the snow and set ablation sticks up at every location. Our last experiment was in the increase of downpour in the form of this of the snow over Queensland to see how great the snow is as an isolator to prevent ice melting and therefore see how much of an effect the increase in snow has on the mass balance. To see the effect on our results we needed to drive home and come back a week later. Black rock on white ice will melt ice faster than the white rock on the white ice. We believe that the second black rock which we place on some black ice will melt the ice faster than the rocks we place on the white ice. We predict that the snow will melt faster on the south side than on the north side because the sun will shine more on the south side. We expect that the ice closer to the moraine will melt faster because the moraine acts like a black body object so it absorbs heat and increases the melting. We hypothesize that the location with the thicker snow will melt slower than the thin snow because we think that the snow will work as an isolator. So here at our first site we can see that um, we had the dark ice and we had the light ice. And um, we saw in our results that the dark ice has melted around 10, ce around 10 centimeters more than the light ice. So a huge difference there in the ice melting. And totally, this side has melted around 41 centimeters in just a week. So here in our second location, we had two different kind of rocks. We had a white rock here. As you can see in the hole, it, it melted 16 centimeters down. And if you come over here, you can see that we had a black rock here and it's a lot large, it's a bigger hole and it melted 24 centimeters down in just one week. So you can see a big effect in how large sediments affect the ice melting, the accelerating ice melting. So when we were here a week ago, we did one square meter with over 30 centimeters of snow on the top, so like this high. And as you can see today, there's nothing left. So we can conclude that the extra albedo effect on the isolation didn't quite well it didn't quite work, uh, but we also think because of the strong winds coming from the glacier, and it's kind of an open area, that some of the snow may have blew it off, blown off because we had strong wind in the past week. We were surprised to see how fast the ice was mel melting, and to observe how little sediment sink the albedo quiet a lot. We also learned that the snow isn't as great as an isolator as we thought and how large sediments affect ice melting. We believe that glacial and climate studies are very important to understand and accelerating ice melting has an impact of the future. If this process continues, we will see drastic weather changes and rising sea levels. So therefore we hope that our research will give better people a better understanding about climate changes in the polar region.